Hello, this is Scott Bacciano, editor of telecoms.com at Africacom 2014, and I'm talking to Dov Barguera, who's CEO of Yumi. Hi, Dov. Hi, Scott. Uh, so I know that you were on a panel discussion earlier on at the show, uh, and I'll come to that in a second, but I was just wondering if you could tell me and our audience a little bit about Yumi first. Absolutely. So first of all, thank you for being here today. Uh, Yumi Africa is a, a relatively young company. It was uh, founded uh, four years ago with a goal to bring broadband wireless high-speed internet, real high-speed internet, into sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Uh, knowing that they, there are no cables in the ground, there's no copper that they can offer ADSL or ADSL similar services. Everything has to happen wireless. Knowing that 3G is totally unadapted for the African region, so the, the goal was immediately to go for the real uh, long-term stuff, which is the 4G. Okay, and why is, I'm curious, why, why is 3G um, unadapted for the African region? 3G was developed for an additional voice application for the European market. So the whole environment is a very expensive, very cumbersome uh, technology. Okay. Uh, the new technology like WiMAX, which is phasing out now, yeah. or uh, TDLTE, which is now coming, are very simple technology, very simple to set up and to operate. So local operator can, with very, very little means, or let's say an, an entrepreneur can start with very little means, right. relatively little means, can yeah. start to become an internet okay. provider. And it's of course data optimized. It's data optimized yeah. and it's simple to, uh, to use for both for the consumer as well as for the operator. And which countries do you operate in? We are today in two countries, in Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire. Okay. In Cameroon we are today probably the leading or one of the, among the top leading uh, broadband wireless operator. We have uh, close to 30,000 uh, uh, users which are using our services uh, constantly. Uh, and in Cote d'Ivoire we launched our services uh, six months ago and now we are uh, crossing the 3,000 subs. Cote d'Ivoire is growing slowly but uh, very nicely. Uh, very important to say is it about actually Cameroon, where it took us almost two years to achieve a situation where the market demand is almost self-sustaining. So we have today gross uh, monthly exceeding 1,000 new subscribers. Okay. And, and, and as you say, um, it looks like this is a broader trend across the continent where a lot of um, providers such as yours are focusing specifically on 4G for, for LTE for the reasons you described, yeah? Exactly. Well, I think the voice market is totally well served. Uh, they are the big players who are sharing among themselves these markets since many years, keeping the price high, the quality low, and uh, so we don't want even to uh, to be part of this uh, game. Right. Uh, we enter the high-end uh, internet. Uh, yes, yeah. and uh, it's 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 nice. It's really nice to see how uh, the market is uh, is reacting to that. Okay, and that was the that was the theme of the panel discussion you were on, which is talking about the, the the advantages of of LTE specifically in Africa. Can you tell us a little bit about how that discussion went? Well, I think uh, the discussion went well. There were uh, three uh, operators like us, pure play operator. Uh, Yumi Africa, which is uh, which is today in two countries, then there were two other, uh, which are uh, one of them in three countries, one of them in one country, and we are all focused on one thing: giving to the customer at home the internet access. We we must keep in mind that 95 percent of the homes in Sub-Saharan Africa don't have internet access. Yeah. So if in Finland and the USA it become part of our even of the constitution, the right to have to have access mm -hmm. to the internet, here it's a dream. So right. uh, th 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 there is a huge market potential. LTE is the right uh, technology because it's, uh, it's technology is purely for the internet access. You can start to discuss uh, uh, other things. There is another venue which uh, we have to look into doing. There is no entertainment in Sub-Saharan Africa. If in Europe or in the USA and uh, Russia we go to the cinema whenever we like, in uh, Shanghai we have uh, tens of the theaters and everything we, we enjoy. Here we don't have theaters, we have very few uh, concerts and we don't have uh, cinemas at all. So having such a platform which is dedicated to for large quantity of data Actually, we are bringing the entertainment to the home of the consumer. Brilliant. Um, and I, I know another thing that came up is the just the overall importance, uh, even even above things like sort of infotainment and that sort of thing, of these um, African consumers being connected because so many of them aren't, as you said. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, your thoughts on this digital divide? Yes. Actually, digital divide, the, the connectivity is only a very small part of it. The, the, lar the large part of the uh, digital divide is having a large population, talk talking mainly about uh, young people finishing universities, who are starting their own companies to bring content into the internet. You know, Facebook uh, and other LinkedIn and so on is nice to have, but it, it's not that what uh, the consumer is looking after. 
So if we want to bring really the, the, the internet to the, to the region, we have to make very, very low cost uh, internet access so that people can start to create their own content like it happens in many other countries. Everybody is developing uh, apps in Europe. You have uh, kids uh, 13 and uh, students so, uh, and then uh, entrepreneurs who are having a lot of content uh, produced. And that's something which must happen here. Just as a matter to uh, remark, you may uh, uh, supported uh, two startups in Cameroon, which are today doing very well. One of them is called EC.CM, it's here.CM, which is nothing else than a, a electronic directory online. Uh, and meanwhile, we started it uh, less than a year ago. We have 12,000 companies. Officially, by the state register, there are only 12,000 companies in Cameroon. Right. And I believe we don't even even a quarter of the companies. Okay. But it shows that there is an interest of the of entrepreneur to have the company published. It's a free of charge service for both for the consumer who is uh, doing the search as well as for the company who is publishing itself. Uh, another uh, platform that we put in place is called Educareer, uh, dot, uh, dot CM. Educareer is actually for educated people to do the career. So what we are doing, we are bringing uh, students who have just finished uh, the graduation and the uh, companies who are looking for employees, we are bringing them together. And uh, we have, uh, in average, per week, uh, 50 to 70 new uh, employment offers. We are checking for that these are real employment offers. We are checking that they, once the job has been filled, that they, it disappears from the platform. Okay. And we have uh, today over 7,000 uh, students that have uh, put their the CVs. They must graduate at the same year that they put the CVs. At the same time, we hope this educator is becoming, uh, I think, now the number six most visited site in uh, Cameroon after less wow. than 12 months. And uh, C.CM, we are, we are hoping that it's going to get the same size as uh, Educare. Okay, yeah. So content, local content, content which attracts the, the population to, yeah. to use the internet is so important. Okay, no, it sounds, sounds like it's really good stuff. Just one last thing, here we are at Africacom 2014. I just wonder if you give us a brief words on, on why this show is useful to you and your company. The show is very good. It's uh, excellent because you can meet a lot of uh, existing partners, a lot of potential partners. I just finished this morning, uh, I think by now, seven or eight meetings that usually I would have to take uh, tickets yeah. to fly there. And it's much more pleasant to see people face to face than on the Definitely. Skype. Um, we meet here, uh, we get here a lot of new ideas, which is uh, actually a very good generator for companies like ours because if you are on the day to day business, you lose the, the real strategic overview, and that's actually what you are facing here. People who are thinking differently, and that's actually what makes it such a, a great uh, event. Right. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Scott.